Well, uh, welcome back to this course, Professional Scientific Communication. So, in the week 3, we are looking at the structure of the manuscript, how you go about, you know, putting together your thoughts into, you know, a statements and words and that finally comes out as a manuscript, right. So, today we will talk about how do you write the section called methods, right. So, when you were asked to write a manuscript out of your results, one of the complaints that most of the students uh, come up with is that many students complain they are not productive writers because they experience writer's block, right. I, I told you that it is much easier doing than saying what you are done. Staring at an empty screen is frustrating because you want to write, you do not know what it is because you know what where to start, right. That becomes a big challenging. So, it is not that the screen is really empty that you need to understand that you are unable to put the words uh, together and convey what you are done, but it is not that you know the screen is empty. So, you have material to start with, but you need to know where to start that would give you confidence because it is important that is that you have some confidence to start with. You have a template of your article and you will all you need is to fill in the blanks because remember we discussed about the outline. I said that put the questions, arrange them into different categories. So, you have these bullets already you know formed for each section. So, what you need to do is that you have to expand them to you know sentences, sentences into paragraphs, paragraphs into sections, right. And what you also have is that you have files of data, you have extra frames, you have digital images, you have microscope images, you have you know all the you know uh, spreadsheet with data. And of course, your lab notebook is full of all the methods and material that are used. So, you have all this data. So, you have to you know again pull out you know these information and put them into words or so, uh, make visual you know for example, schematic or chart or bar diagram or line diagram or you know take the gel images, crop them, make good figures. This is how you start when you do that then it pretty much forms bulk of your results right. So, all you need to do is to scrutinize your data that you have the pieces and put together as a comprehensive paper. So, it is not that you do not have, it is not that the monitor is blank, you have everything is like a puzzle, you have different pieces, you know how to assemble them. When you assemble possibly the board will now convey something, you know a beautiful picture or beautiful story that is exactly your scientific paper is. So, all you need to know is how to assemble the pieces. Again I'm going back to the same old paper, how to write your first research paper, but that is what we are using as a basis to explain how to write, right. Because I am using one particular paper therefore, you can go back and forth and consult that paper along with this you know lecture therefore, you can read better. I told that the third rule in this you know seven rule theory of writing a paper is be meticulous and accurate in describing the materials method section. Because this is something that you know you are done already. So, you know what are the materials you have used, what is the method that you have used. So, the best way to start your research paper is to start writing the materials and method section because really there is no intellectual challenge there because you have to put together a narrate everything most often in a chronological order. Therefore, you can finish bulk part of your either a manuscript or your thesis because it is about 20 percent, 25 percent of your paper materials methods, right. You can easily write another 25 percent paper or 40 percent is results, which is again easier to write because this is something the data you already have. So, what you are going to discuss today in this lecture is how do you write the materials and methods section. And I told you often people start with that because it is much easier among all the different sections of the paper the materials and method section is the easiest one. So, therefore, let us start with the materials method section. The method section describes actions to be taken to investigate a research problem and the rationale for the application of specific procedure or techniques used to identify, select, process and analyze information applied to understanding the problem thereby allowing the reader. It is a pretty long sentence, right. What it says is that it is not simply saying how you are done. 
it is also important to sort of tell as to why you are done, why you have used that approach and so on. So, the methodology section of a depending on what kind of research you do. So, how was the data collected and generated? This is one important question. How was it analyzed? This is another important element of your method section because the writing should be direct, precise and always written in the past tense, right? It is very important because you are narrating what you have done. Therefore, you have to write always in the past tense, the methodology section invariably it will be in past tense and some of those elements that we will discuss now. So, why you need to have method section because you must have consulted many lab manuals because there are manuals available for example, you have molecular cloning there are manuals available for recombinant DNA technology, there are manuals available for protein expression purification, maybe you followed exactly what is given that right. So, why you need that? So, it is important is that you know you have to narrate exactly what experiment you have done to arrive at the results that you have presented in the paper. Therefore, other person can reproduce, you can do the same thing and reproduce. Often when you carry out any experiment even based on a well standardized you know a kind of method, all the uh, materials that are used for a given assay for example, may not be identical because the method, the volume, the book would never tell you that you have to buy this particular reagent from a given vendor, they will not do because they will only say you use this reagent. Now, this reagent can be of good quality or of bad quality or the by then in the manufacturers made some difference to the reagent such that it becomes far more active, right. Therefore, you have to even mention as to what material you have used, what is the source of the material Therefore, the other person can use the same, therefore, you can also you know get better results because the material may work much better as compared to the material you have, you have been using before. Therefore, the audience can judge whether the results and conclusions are valid and another, another thing because you say what you have done and what approach you have used to analyze the data even that is discussed in the method section. Therefore, they can go back to your raw data and analyze and understand how you are done and then appreciate yes and then they say that ok, whatever you are concluding based on this data is accurate because they also agree that this is the best possible way to explain the results for that they should know how you have analyzed the data. That is why the methods and materials section is very important and these are some of the you know again 5 major points that you should consider when you write the method section. One, describing the material used in the study you know the material right, it could be chemical right, it could be some bio molecules, it could be the samples, it could be the subjects or it could be a you know a tool or a, you know a, a online resource that you have used or it could be an algorithm, it could be anything right, but that is you know materials explaining how the materials are prepared if you have you know used certain novel material that is prepared in your lab you want to explain that, describe the research protocol you know the step by step how you are done, explaining how the measurement was done because often these are uh, quantitative measurements. So, you have to say how it was done and then how you have done the calculation and finally you know often your experiments may require statistical tests to prove the difference significance and so on or you analyze the data. Again what kind of analysis you have done, what kind of statistical tool that you have used that makes the you know methods uh, very precise and concise and as required. Let us see some of those issues now. One describing the materials used in the study right, it could be subject for example, I told you like you know one of the examples that we have given earlier is that you know dementia in a patients and we have used a particular you know therapy what do you call it X therapy and that was used to sort of arrive at a title you know a better title that was one topic that we described in the previous lecture. Now, there we mentioned it is 40 Japanese you know patients right. So, that is that is what subject is. So, when method section you have to say exactly you know who are they for example, patients suffering from a given disease and then you have to say what was the inclusion and exclusion criteria to call them that they are having a dementia then you must have used certain parameters to say as long as a given patient 5 different symptoms let us say all, all the patients show all the 5 symptoms then they are included as you know dementia. And then you have excluded 
you know for examples and criteria the dementia could be secondary meaning you have had some other ailment as a result you had some for example a treatment the treatment may have induced dementia now as a result dementia is secondary is not the primary problem so then i should you know exclude so then you have what is called as inclusion criteria exclusion criteria and that's what my subject what is the age group what is this male only or female only or both and what is the ethnicity all these you know are involved in in what is called a subject species for example if you are using animal as a model then you want you want to say what species you cannot say that rat model you have to say exactly what is the species that you have used you cannot say is mouse you have to say which mouse species you have used because at times there are variation in terms of what kind of results come out and it could be species specific or strain specific then you have to mention that and then you have to say what are the reagents that you have used what are the chemicals you have used often you say the source of the chemicals source of the reagents and if it is commercially available then you identify the company you have used often people ask you to put the cat number as well therefore they can go and check as to what exactly was the purity of the compound or how did they produce and so on these details are available in the company website if i want to know i can go back and look at it or if you have you know the chemical is given by somebody other researcher then you mention his or her name that it is you know a gift of somebody or you borrowed it from somebody and so on if it is synthesized in their own lab if it is prepared in their own lab but source must be mentioned therefore people can go back and request them and so on so that's uh, very important when i talk about subject i said you know these are you know demography in a sense that what a population you are looking at what age group you are looking at as a male or female in terms of for example you are looking at hygiene as one of the parameters are you looking at the low income group or high income group because it varies depending on whether you are looking at urban area or rural area or you are looking at slum area you know and then what age you are looking at what sex you are looking at you know as a male female so there are so many other elements that you need to look into because these are extremely important because if you recall we discussed one uh, data in the beginning where we are uh, discussing about the hypothesis and we gave a hypothetical data talking about two different age groups uh, population one is uh, that are affected with osteoporosis other one is healthy control and then you find that there is a you know a pseudo correlation with the monthly income work for living whether you smoke alcohol and so on you know it is because there is a sample bias you know you can see that in case of osteoporosis cases you have had more female than male whereas the control it is pretty normal so this can pretty much you know you know lead to a false you know kind of a conclusion therefore if if the data was available presented in the paper and even if i had made a wrong conclusion if as a reader someone was go into the data and then say that this is wrong because your data basically is not accurate so that's why it's very very important because once you have written your paper published even if it is published and people are not going to just blindly follow what you say they're going to go and look into your results and say whether your results support what you are saying if the results do not support what you are saying they are going to question in their paper that that whatever you have made conclusion that is wrong your paper may be cited but for a wrong reason therefore the data helps so therefore the methods material section should have all these components therefore others can you know understand and appreciate that you have done a good job or use that data to you know infer on their own the correct inference right and the third element in describing materials method used in your study is also what is called as ethical biosafety consideration so if you are using human samples you know say you have drawn blood and and the serum level you are looking at several biomarkers for as a possible correlation with certain ailments then you know any time when you use a human as a subject for any research application then one need to get clearance from an appropriate body called as a review body which looks into your objectives looks into your methodology looks into your statistical power and tell you whether you, you can go ahead and do the experiment or not unless that the review body allows you to do research in a given proposed area you should not be doing 
any research involving you know samples or subjects you know human patients or even healthy controls so for example in india there is a guidelines proposed by the indian council of medical research it's called the ethical guidelines for biomedical research on human patients and this guidelines pretty much tells you as to what are the you know circumstances on which you can do research using human subjects and what is the regulatory body that can allow you to conduct such experiments so before even you start your experiments you have to provide all the details to this regulatory body often it's called as institute human ethics committee and the committee looks into your protocol and then and looks into the number of subject that you are using and then what kind of uh, uh, assays that you are going to do and what kind of sample that you are going to draw from these subjects and why this study is important if this committee feel that this study is not going to add anything new is already been done it may say why are you harming a subject because you are going to draw blood that is an in in basically an invasive procedure you are going to put a needle and take the blood out and second most often the committee used to protect the subjects why do you need a committee because you know most often you know the human subjects come under uh, you know a kind of what is called the clinical trial so if there is a new drug that is you know, being developed by a pharmaceutical company before being marketed the drug has to be validated as to be it is safe and it is effective and it can be given to patients suffering from a given disease right so for this this drug has to go through what is called as a clinical trial so in that what they do is that that identify some you know patient group who are told about the drug and these are the patients that otherwise you know you don't have an effective drug drug to treat their for example whatever disease that they have and in the company the doctors and the research team convinces the patient that this drug has the potential to treat and then they agree for that and the review board agrees that that drug can be you know under you know can be tested in this patient if that is done then these patients were given the drug and they were monitored as to how do they react to this particular drug is it any adverse effect does it get any better when they have such kind of clinical trial you get to know that a given drug works better than the existing one and 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 that kind of observation replicated in multiple you know um, samples multiple groups in multiple countries once you know that it is indeed good the clinical trials convey that it has more beneficial effect than otherwise because no drug is free from any harmful effect you always have some adverse effect but if the beneficial effects are much higher than the side effects then that the drug is approved by the appropriate body that it is good for you know as a drug then only it comes into so that's where the ethical guidelines are important because the rights of the subject is you know is is sort of governed by or taken care by the committee because whenever a drug trial comes in you know the pharma companies may have huge amount of money they really want to get the drug going because they can get revenue out of the drug because that is how they are investing these are you know mostly these are profit making companies and therefore they want the drug to be tested but what is that the patient is you know is going to be uh, benefited what if the drug is having an adverse effect right what if they leave the patient and go so what are the rights that patient has so these are the some of the you know elements that are looked by this committee and gives you certain structure and the the that the patient has the right to know what has happened with the drug and what is his biochemical parameter whether it has an adverse effect and what are the you know what is the outcome of the study you know only he is one of the many but he has every right to know how the drug has you know worked in the entire so what are the rights that patient or the subject has so these are some of those elements that are discussed in the biomedical research ethics committee and if you are involved in any such research you need to know what is that you know guidelines and how is the committee functions and why you should get the study protocol approved through the committee if you are using animals then in india you have a different committee called institute animal ethics committee this is governed by the guidelines of for the committee for the purpose of control and supervision of experimental experiments on animals what is called as cpc sea this committee presumably tells why should animal be used the question is for your own research why should you harm any animal right so there has to be compelling reason as that that this experiment should be done so the committee needs to be convinced and the committee needs to be convinced that the number of animals that you are you know sort of you know proposing 
is required because hey, after all you are you are playing with the life of the animal right they may suffer because of the experiment you do right although they may not be able to convey it to you but they do suffer so is it really really justified so this is what the committee looks into and the committee also suggests various measures by which the animals can be you know you know uh, 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 you know use animals for the experimentation without you know causing much pain to the animals so there are guidelines again this is governed by that the third one that is relevant to the bio research is in you know the bio safety committee if you are using any recombinant protein for example this protein you may be expressing in for example e coli which is a harmless bacterium but the protein may be could be from for example mycobacterium which causes the tuberculosis now one need to understand whether you know expressing a foreign protein in e coli would turn the e coli into something other than the normal e coli or if you are doing any research that is by which you are putting a foreign gene into a plant right and the plant now is grown outside now it's you know the pollen would carry all the transgenic you know gene and how it's going to affect the environment the other plants that are otherwise non transgenic so these are the issues that needs to be looked at so there is a committee which you know the guidelines set by the department of biotechnology now it tells you clearly what level of permission is required for what kind of project so it has to be cleared by them before you do then there are guidelines as to how to contain you know for example such kind of you know um, microbes or plants that that you genetically modify and so on so this you should know because there are guidelines and it is important because when you submit a paper the journal would ask you whether this study has been you know vetted approved by any of the regulatory committees and you have to say yes it has been and if they demand you have to give the clearance certificate therefore it must be done up front even before you start the experiment right so you should know that there are ethical consideration in terms of how do you do the such the second point is explaining how the materials are prepared say suppose you have generated a novel compound novel chemical by a synthetic process right you need to tell how it was generated because this is not something that is available off the shelf from any of the companies so you have to give the entire synthetic you know path you know pathway or schematic how you have generated it and any novelty or modification you brought in therefore others can use it or even if you have purchased some chemical from outside commercial source you need to give the antibodies for example antibodies the source and cat number chemical source and cat number the reason being you may have used an antibody that a, 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 a vendor or a company sold it as this antibody would recognize a given protein so you believe that indeed that's the case and you have been using it in an experiment and it possible that in addition to the protein that you are detecting it also detects in something else and you are you know interpreting that as you know the other protein that you are interested in and possibly it is a non specific band now by showing that what is the source what is the cat number when someone else uses the same and then they find out that the other band what they are using or they are getting is not the one that is specific to this protein you know they are able to tell you that your results these bands are not because of you know the specific reaction is a non specific reaction and since you have used a commercial source for this you are not at fault you have went with what they have claimed certified to be an antibody that recognizes this protein but it is because of the manufacturer could not validate it it helps others to validate the given antibody that's why the cat numbers are given likewise the chemicals the purity everything matters in redoing experiment confirming whether it is accurate therefore in your methods section you have to list all these things which help you well others in arriving at you know replicating or strengthening whatever conclusion that you are making the final one is describing the research protocol right the exact sequence of how the procedure was executed you have to write rational assumption of explain better because you need to say why i have done this you know it's very important and then for example these are the two statements bacteria were pelleted by centrifugation to isolate t cells lymph nodes were collected now it may sound that these are better way of writing but indeed that's not the case bacteria were pelleted by centrifugation it does not say as to you know what speed you have used to isolate t cells lymph nodes were collected you know how did you collect lymph node these are not said so bacteria were pelleted by centrifugation at 3000 g for 15 minutes at 25 degrees this is very important because what speed that you have used for the centrifugation 
to pellet the bacteria what is the same you know you know temperature you use to isolate t cells you know uh, mediastinal and mesenteric lymph nodes from bulb c mice you know it doesn't say the first sentence doesn't say from whom the human mouse rat so now you say bulb c mice because this particular strain of mice collected at what age group at day 7 after immunization you know so it gives you the detail these are very very important when you document you know your method section and starting with the statistical tests you know how what are the tests you have done to analyze your data you have to narrate at the end of the method section as to how you have validated how you have you know looked at the significance of the the variation differences that you found right so now i'm going to take few examples and explain as to how how effectively you can you can write the method section so i'm going to put something from again a publisher's website this is from springer which says materials and methods this section provides the reader with all the details of how you conducted your study you should for example use subheadings to separate different methodologies for example there could be animal studies there could be cell line studies there could be biochemical assays each one should have different subheadings describe what you did in the past tense because you are narrating what you have done so you cannot write what you will do right so it should be said like you know the cells were grown at 37 degrees for 24 hours thereafter they were harvested and the lysates were prepared and immunoblot was carried out this is the past tense that's how you should write describe new methods in enough detail that another researcher can reproduce your experiment so if you are improving an existing method you may cite the original method need not detail everything because already you are citing therefore one can go back and look how they have done it but you can say what changes you brought in for example you are using an antibody for immunoblotting to identify a specific protein or the level so they may have used the antibody at 37 degrees for one hour with the sample for the antibody antigen interaction but maybe that was giving some non specific you know interaction so you went and then incubated the antibody at 4 degrees for longer time say 12 hours now in this case then you need to say that you know i have used the same antibody as detailed in the previous um, report but instead for the interaction i have used 4 degrees for 12 hours so that's the you know novelty or change that you have made that is important because it may give you better results and others may appreciate that then they can go back and reproduce you know after reading your paper describe established methods briefly the point i just now explained well known method already documented available in the literature you can briefly mention by giving the reference by citing a reference where readers can find more data so you don't need to rewrite everything what has been done before state all statistical tests and parameters and these are verbatim taken from the springer website which houses which publishes a number of research paper let's see how do you write methods again you need outline right so even for materials method you need to make an outline this is always important because you know when you start writing then you may forget something so even before you start writing you always make an outline as to what are the point that you need to cover in every section likewise in methods and materials make an outline for the flow of content this is very important so you need to see for example if my study involves animals tissues cells and biomolecules let's say i have done some animal study i have done surgery then i have looked at certain tissue we have done a histopathology then i have cultured cells from the animals i have done some study then i have extracted protein or mrna from the cell i have done some study so there are different levels so when i write methods i should always use what is again going back our original discussion like address you start with which country which state which district which city and which street number right you start with animal and say what was the animal that you have used what is the line that you have used how did you you know how is animal what surgery you have done and you have used tissue for histopathology you have to write about the tissue how you dissected how you have done histopathology and you have talked about cells come next then you say how cultured the cells and what kind of culture conditions you used and then if you have extracted you know protein rna from the cells or tissues comes at the end because the um, the approach that you use to analyze protein whether it is from cell or tissue or from the animal you know it's all very similar because you take out tissue from the animal you know you homogenize to make it like a single cell suspension 
is very similar to your cell culture condition and then you lyse the cells and then you have the protein. So now the protein lysate is similar regardless whether you got it from the cell culture or from tissue or directly dissected from the animal from the tissue and so on. So that can come at the end. So you need to have certain you know uh, some outline you have to think in a rational way. For example, you can you talked about certain bioassays, the second model that you upfront put all the reagent that you have used. So, what are the reagents that you have used and what is the source, what is the cat number? It lists everything that you have procured, right? all fine chemicals, antibodies or fine chemicals. Then you talk about the cell lines that you have procured from where you have procured and then you discuss your assays and then you discuss about your statistics. So, it all depends on what kind of work that you do. If it is like a population based work, you then you say the population what is the study population, what is the number, what is the female male demography and what kind of questionnaire you use to shortlist the patient group and then the statistics that you have to validate your findings. So, each one you know it has got. It also includes for example, ethical clearance. If I use animal for experimentation, I have to mention that whether the study was cleared by the animal review committee. If I use human population, whether it was cleared by the review board that approved that protocol. So, this also should be part of your method and then what once you have this outline then you have to narrate the steps followed in chronological order. Say suppose I have done a given assay for example, let us talk about I have prepared a cell assay. Then you have to start in the chronological order what you have done first I cultured the cells for 2 hours or 24 hours. After that I have harvested the cells by using drypsin. After that I sliced the cells by mild homogenization with a drypsin. After that, I centrifuged to remove the nuclei. Then I took the cytoplasmic extract. I boiled with SDS, you know, uh, loading buffer to denature all the protein. Then I loaded in a gel, separated them based on their molecular weight, and then transferred it to a membrane, incubated with the protein, and then visualized the protein of my interest by using one or the other method. So, this is the chronological order that is exactly should be used. And finally, you have to say, you know, you have to say, you know how you have documented the result, right? If it is in Western, then there is a calorimetric method or a luminescent method, chemiluminescent method. Then you have an extra flame or a chemidog, which gives you the signal. Or it sometimes is a readout, you know, of some cell assays. Then you have some values from your spectrophotometer or from your bioluminator, you know, kind of measurements. Then you have to have that. So how do you document and what kind of analysis you have done? that also becomes part of your method. Go back to the same point that materials and methods section is the only section in research paper in which passive voice is predominantly you know used and the rest of the section you often use active voice. So, for example, we developed and used a method for image analysis as described below. So, you you know that that is not the way you write. So, a new method was developed and used for the image analysis that I did below. There are different ways of writing you want to go and look at common mistakes. Let us look into that. There is a difference between methods and a protocol. A protocol is a guide as to how you have to perform experiment, what is the next step and so on. Often one mistake people follow is that I use this method protocol to carry out my experiment. Therefore, I can use exactly the same as the method section? The answer is no. For example, a protocol would say incubate the sample at 37 degrees for 1 hour and process for the measurement. But your method is something that tells you what you have done. If the sample was incubated at 37 degrees for 1 hour because that is what you have done. You have not done it for 2 hours. A protocol may say 1 hour at times you may change it. So, you have to mention what you have done rather than what you have been asked to do. And processed for the measurement using a spectrophotometer, you say how it was measured, you say what is the wavelength that you use. Often we also give what make the company the measurement that, that you have used for this. Encourage to use abbreviation, the rest of the section of the manuscript you may not be encouraged, but methods section which encourages you to use abbreviations because there are you know chemical names that are pretty long and you may have used this chemical often in that you know in the different methods by repeating the long names make it very difficult for people to read. So, you can abbreviate for example, DNA, RNA these are well known you know acronyms these are but abbreviations SDS for example, a detergent that used for denaturing protein mostly it is said as STS 
and then DAPI again a stain used for nuclei, SEM, TEM for example, these are scanning electron microscope tunnel, H normally refers to the hour etc. So, what is always advised is that you define the abbreviation the first occurrence or you have a separate section where all abbreviations are listed in your thesis it may be a table and then after which you can use that abbreviation all over in your method section this is always encouraged and, the, and finally consult the journal guidelines for the use of standard units because every journal will have its own way of writing for example, H for hour or HR for hour. So, they may say exactly what is the kind of units that you have to use. There are many international standard units, one I am showing here again from a journal web page. Units of measurement there are for example, often you know the centigrade is always used in scientific literature when you are talking about temperature. So, in the incubation for example, at 37 degree, but if you go to US you know they talk about the weather in Fahrenheit right. So, that is a they use it for you know saying what is the temperature in India we use even the weather also we always say today is 16 degree you know centigrade in Kanpur. So, that is what it is we do not say in Fahrenheit, but in US they say that, but when it comes to scientific literature there is a standard for temperature always is centigrade and then you measure the weight always it is milligrams or grams or you know things like that and then there are other forms for example, drug you know there are again uh, non proprietary names for example, aspirin you take it and that is a commercial name the chemical name is very different right. So, when you use that chemical you have to use the chemical name not the commercial name and species names again I said that humans for example, homo sapiens likewise if you use mouse lab mouse it is must musculus and then there are strains that you have to mention this is a convention when you write species name, genes, mutations, genotypes, alleles you know when you talk about gene there are convention as to how the gene there is a specific name for the gene. So, that should be used how to use it there are italics you know the slanting letters that is the way it should be written. And then there is again a convention for allergens for example, you are you are discussing about any immune related work and then there are allergens that are again there are st standard nomenclature. So, all these are there you have to follow that before you start writing because you need to know what should be used right that is very very important. Now, I am going to end this lecture by giving some examples right um, as to how people generally write methods. You can see here this is copy pasted something from one of the publications. Now, it talks about a subheading under materials method that is reagents and antibodies all it narrates is what are the antibodies that have been used what is the cat number what is the source you can see anti mic some number Roche India anti B beta actin some cat number sigma average. So, it tells you that what are the antibodies are used what source and what cat number because the cat number tells you also relates to a particular clone from where they have generated antibodies. So, as long as you buy the same cat number and lot number you know it is expected to behave the same way. So, then there are chemicals again there are some important chemicals again it shows from where did you get it and you can see one example is that you know you talk about at the last line MTT and this is an abbreviation for a long name of a chemical you can see that. So, often you abbreviate these things. So, again it says from which source you have obtained and then you have generated something new right then you know then you have to say how you have generated the reagent. So, this particular slide talks about the expression constructs you know some of them were obtained from somewhere, but some you have generated on your own. So, it gives you a nucleotide sequence which was synthesized you know uh, and then they were put into a expression construct therefore, it produces a you know a protein variant which may have a given property. So, that is that is what it is like how you generated constructs because it is something that you made it therefore, you need to tell how you have made it. So, that is very very important and then conditions of your experiments here we are talking about cell lines for example, cos 7 Nero T A were obtained from the National Center for Cell Science Pune India. So, you say which is the source for your you know cell lines and these are you know accredited national laboratories which 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 sort of you know routinely look at the cell lines and say whether they are good good for research and they do all these bioassays to validate that cell line is good. So, when you mention that you know that you have obtained these lines from a lab which has the facility to certify that these are original cell lines and therefore, whatever the way they behave 
is, is expected of that particular cell line. So, it is very, very important and then you mentioned how you have done all these experiments with regard to your whatever assays that you have done. And another one we are talking about animals, you clearly say how do you, you know what is the source of the animals and whether the protocol was approved. So, you can see the one that is shown here in red color, it says the study protocol was approved by the animal ethics committee of the institute, clearly it tells that this protocol was upfront approved even before you started the work, it has been approved. So, these are important elements that really, really look into and when you talk about for example, you know some biochemical you know purification we often say centrifugation. So, in centrifugation often we say what is the, uh, you know centrifugation is basically there is a rotor there is a, that rotates in a particular speed. So, in a centrifuge you set the speed, but what you mention in methods is not the speed at which the, in the, rot, in the sample rotates, but it is the g force that is calculated based on, you know uh, a formula that is you must be knowing that is from the center of the radius how far the sample was that determines the force applied on the tube, if it is closer to the radius less and if it is far away, it is much more for the same speed of rotation. So, that is something that you need to know because the rotor size may vary, but by having this g force you can arrive at the same g force regardless what centrifuge you are using in a lab. So, these are extremely important in the method section. So, what I am going to do end is by giving a small schematic, what is shown here is Obviously, those who have done some you know um, lab work you know that this schematic is about plasmid DNA isolation, this is a schematic. What I want you is to you know look at this and write a method as if you have done the experiment. That is how would you you know get the plasmid from the bacterium if you have cultured it and carried out all these you know methods steps and in about 300 words you write a method the way that I have explained. So, that possibly would help you to learn how to write methods. So, with that we end this section and we will meet again next week with the introductory section and discussion and we will wrap up uh, this course the next week.